What's up my YouTube community, Mike the Manic Geek here, and I'm finally getting the chance to take a look at a case that uh, admittedly I had been drooling over a little bit uh, for the past uh, couple of months now. Um, I'm going to be taking a look at the Fractal Design Define R5. Now this is a case that I did not purchase or get as a review sample, but I won in a competition, and um, what I had to do to win it was describe something called the Flying Squirrel. Uh, I'll have a link down in the video description for you guys to check out exactly what that's about. Spoilers, it's kind of funny. Um, so this is a silence optimized case that's been released by Fractal Design. Uh, this is the fifth revision, hence the R5 in the name. And uh, it boasts a suite of some pretty interesting features. And um, we're going to take a look at all of them today and uh, I'll let you guys know what I think about it. So let's dig in. So to start with, we have this nice, clean, Scandinavian, minimalistic design aesthetic going on the outside of the case, which does its best to not draw a whole lot of attention to itself. Uh, the front panel for the case does swing open uh, either way you see fit and has nice sound dampening foam on the inside of it, and all you need to do to change the orientation that it opens is switch out some little brackets on the inside of the hinges. Now inside we do also have a three speed fan speed controller that's designed for the three for up to three fans in the inside of the case. And we do have some really easy to remove and reinstall optical drive bay covers in the event that you do decide to use the optical bays installed in the case. Now even though these are not dust filtered, the bottom section of the front of the case is with filtering for up to two 280 millimeter fans as well as some dust filtering in the bottom of the case, which is both extremely long, easy to remove, and easy to clean. Uh, front I.O. is your typical audio and mic jack, uh, reset button, power button, two USB 2 and USB 3.0 ports. Now the real feature in the roof here is the Modjuvent system, which allows you to custom tailor the airflow through the roof of the case any way you see fit. However, keep in mind that some of the vents are shaped a little differently. Now, the rear side panel does offer captive screws to help keep you from losing them. And while the right side panel doesn't offer this feature, it does offer an easy latching system that enables you to remove and replace the panel with ease in the event that you go to the inside of your case a lot. Moving to the inside of the case, we can see that there's actually ample room for just about anything your little heart could imagine in a build, uh, including room for up to eight three and a half inch hard drives. Uh, now, modularity is the name of the game here, uh, with the ability to uh, move around and remove entirely all of your hard drive cages and your optical drive base, so even the longest graphics cards won't be an issue here. Uh, there's a nice huge CPU cutout area and really nice cable grommets running all along the motherboard tray, which can hold up to an ATX motherboard. Uh, the bottom of the case is also nice and cleanly laid out with room for either a really long power supply or up to a 240 millimeter water cooling radiator should you see fit. Moving around to the back of the case, there is tons of room for cable management back here with some nice included strap downs for cables and two two and a half inch drive uh, mounting points that are just as easy to remove as they are to reinstall again. Now seeing a build in its native environment, uh, we can see that things clean up really nicely on the inside of the Define R5. And uh, should you decide to build a system in this, I think you'll find it to be a really easy build experience. All right, so there you guys have it. That's my rundown and the build that I did in the Fractal Design Define R5. Uh, you guys might notice that right about now the case is looking pretty empty. Uh, reason being, um, moved everything back into my daily driver case. Um, that and I wanted to, to talk a little bit more about what I noticed while I was building in it. Um, <clears throat> now, first, all the other reviews that you've seen out there are definitely validated in their claims that this is an exceptionally silent case. This is probably, out of the box, one of the Actually, it is the quietest case that I've ever encountered. Um, the sound dampening foam that's in here is remarkably thick. Um, it does a really good job of, of toning down the pitch of whatever sound your hardware is making and makes for a really enjoyably quiet uh, computing experience. Um, <clears throat> now, these are the fans that come with the case. These are their uh, dynamic fans uh, that they actually just started selling as a standalone product. Um, 
And I gotta say, they, um, they are stupidly quiet. Uh, to the point I had to have my ear about an inch away from them at full speed in order to hear them running at all. Uh, that being said, they don't move tremendous amounts of air, so if you're trying to use these in an environment where you're using a lot of hardware that generates tons of heat and you need to exhaust that rapidly, um, I might consider running these at the very least at full speed. Uh, if not possibly considering a different fan option. Now, if silence is the key here and you're using hardware that doesn't put out tons of heat, uh, then these will work just fine for you. Um, I also wouldn't recommend trying to use these on a radiator, uh, mostly because uh, there's not really enough static pressure to, to help assist the amount of air that these fans are capable of generating. Um, but, that being said, the build quality on these is fantastic, the bearing on this is nice and smooth, and um, really, as case fans go, these are probably some of the best that I've ever seen. Now, as for building in this case, building was in large part a snap. Um, there's plenty of room behind the motherboard tray for your cables. Um, the recess in the bottom near where your power supply mounts on the inside, on the opposite side of the motherboard tray, gives you plenty of room to stash any of your unused cables uh, in the event that you don't need to route them. Uh, that being said, uh, approach this case with non-modular power supplies uh, with caution because there, there will be a rat's nest of cables back there. Um, and especially if you're using cable extensions, uh, be mindful of how you route your cables because it can be very difficult to keep things comfortably routed and organized in the back when you add that extra length of cable uh, to the proceedings. Um, now, as far as my opinions of overall internal layout are concerned, this thing is cavernous for its size. Um, I mean, now, now granted, this is with all of the other hard, uh, the, the hard drive bays and the optical drive bays removed, but you can see there is a ton of room in here for hardware. Um, you know, and that being said, this is one of the easier cases that I've, that I've built in. Uh, probably the only one that I've built in that was maybe a little easier than this that they make uh, was the Core 3500, uh, and that's only because that's that's a little bit more straightforward a case. It's not dealing with sound dampening foam, but there are obvious trade-offs with that. So you know, take that as you will. Um, now, as they discuss on their website, you can hold up to a uh, 420 millimeter radiator in the roof, provided that it is a slim radiator, so nothing thicker than 30 mil. Uh, you can hold up to a 360 mil rad in the front, and you can hold up to a 240 mil rad in the bottom, officially. Um, I don't really feel like you'd be able to get away with holding anything much larger than that in the floor of this, unless you were to do some modifications on the case. Um, but again, that's all up to you. So, And then you can, of course, hold either a, a single 120 or 140 rad in the back, uh, which, you know, that's all up to the user whether or not you want to use single radiators like that. My home theater computer uses them, and they work just fine. Other people have varying opinions on the matter, uh, and they are justified. Um, so, um, the grommets here are, ex are of excellent quality. Um, I really like the recessed tray here. Uh, that sort of makes it, it makes the case look like it's cradling the hardware rather than the hardware just sort of being just there. I don't know, it adds something, it adds something more refined to the proceedings here. And that being said, uh, there is the obvious limitation that you can't hold anything bigger than a standard ATX motherboard in here. Granted, you wouldn't really want to because once you get into those bigger uh, motherboards, you're, you're typically running a system that's using more components, uh, generates a bit more heat, and that's not really advisable, in my opinion, in a case like this. Now, why am I on about, um, why am I on about 
uh, heat generating components. Mike, you can just remove the mod events in the roof. And yes, that's very true. You can just remove the mod events and get some more cooling up in the roof of the case. But the problem with doing that is you remove a fair bit of the sound dampening that this case comes with. Now, for some people, that's a compromise that they're willing to make um, just for the sake of having this, this, super, uh, this super minimalistic uh, case. But for me personally, I kind of feel like if you, if you remove more than maybe one of the vents in the roof, that you're, then you're kind of defeating the purpose of this case to begin with. The purpose of this case is to have the most silent build imaginable on your desk or in your living room or whatever it is you plan on doing with it. Um, that being said, my personal advice, advisement for a build route in this case would be to get the thickest 360 millimeter radiator that you can in the front for cooling uh, processor and one, maybe two graphics cards depending on their uh, thermal design power. Um, but I personally would leave the Majuvents on the roof. Um, these do add a fair bit of sound dampening uh, to the case, and every one of these that you remove makes a very noticeable difference in the acoustic quality of the case. Now, that being said, um, you're not going to, you're not just gonna throw any hardware in here and automatically have a silent system. It's only gonna be as quiet as the hardware that you put in there. So the quieter your hardware is naturally, the quieter this system is going to be as a whole. So you're not gonna throw something like a Cooler Master Sickle Flow fan in here, something like some crazy, uh, the, those crazy 3000 RPM Noctua industrial fans in here and expect them to just not make any noise at all. They will make noise, but the pitch of that noise is going to drop noticeably. So if you have something that already has a noticeably low audible signature and you wanna get that as low as you possibly can, this is the route to go. Um, I would advise a case like this for something like a, um, so something like a, uh, a storage farm like what, um, like what Tom Logan's doing at Overclock3D.net. Um, he's throwing 40 terabytes worth of hard drives in this thing and doing some mod work on it as well. Um, that would be an excellent use for this. Um, another great use, uh, in my opinion, would be if you're going to do a water-cooled build, like I said, keep the roof panels on, get the biggest 360 millimeter radiator that you can fit in the front here, uh, cool processor and single graphics card and keep things simple and clean. Minimalism is the key here and you, the closer you stick to a minimalistic build in this case, the better it's going to look, the stronger it will show and the happier ultimately you'll be. Um, now the other reason I suggest a 360 millimeter radiator is because having just the single 360 in the front means you've got three fans worth of intake and just the single fan worth of exhaust back here, which gives you positive case pressure, which means that the lack of dust filtering that is in the optical drive bays here for mounting an additional fan is kind of gonna be a non-issue. I mean, most of your dust is gonna get filtered here anyway through the, the front mesh. Um, so I wouldn't really worry about that too much, and especially if you've got that much positive case pressure in this system, you're probably not gonna have much of an issue with dust at all. I mean, every other opening in this case is dust filtered for days, so I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really sweat that too much. Um, you know, and then as far as the side panel window goes, uh, I, think that doesn't, I think it does an excellent job of showing off the hardware that's on the inside here. Um, and it does so without uh, exposing all the rest of the, the the gear that's in the front of the case. Um, you know, I was actually particularly fond of that when I had my system built in here. Um, you know, I put the I put my white LED Corsair fans up front. I had the white glow from the uh, from the H140X kit. 
and it was it was displaying really well. Um, but like I said, the main reason I swapped from back from this to my daily driver case is because I've got I've got a different type of build in mind, and I personally just wanted a case that was just a little bit more spacious on the inside. Uh, and that had a much larger viewing area. And as I can source parts for that, I'll be doing a video on it as well. Um, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, have any of you had any building experiences with the Define R5? Uh, have you had any? Um, have you had any issues with your case? Uh, I'd love to know so I could uh, so I could maybe forward it over to uh, over to Fractal Design. I mean, granted, my channel is not particularly large, but the more user feedback they get, the better, because this case just like all of their newest case lines, are a product of what you guys have had to say to them. Um, so yeah, the more feedback they get, the better. Um, would I recommend this case at its price point? Absolutely. friggin lutely this, this case is a gem. Uh, you know, excellent build quality throughout. Uh, great sound signature on it for, for getting your hardware as quiet as you can possibly get it. A nice, simple, clean look on the outside that's not going to draw too much attention to itself. And in this case, an awesome shade of white. Um, but yeah, leave me some feedback on the video in the comments below. Uh, like it if you liked it. Uh, disliked it if you thought it sucked. Uh, don't forget to share and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy, YouTube.